Hey, badass business owners, are you wondering if you are pricing correctly? Well, after all, what is the goal of pricing anyways? Well, ultimately, good pricing means you're going to maximize your profits and you're going to stop leaving money on the table, which is what so many small business owners do. Besides that, you deserve more than just employee type wages. So in this video, we're going to take a closer look at pricing, what goes into it, and how you can maximize your profits. Now, Typically what happens with most people when they're doing the pricing is they get hung up on three different things. The first of which is going to be that they price to their competition. Now your competition is very important for you to understand, but they're not everything. And we're going to take a deeper dive at all three of these here in just a moment. The second thing that they tend to do is people tend to undervalue their services. And that just means that they just assume it's only worth something when it's actually worth a lot more. And the third thing is they fail to account for all costs and all expenses when setting the prices in the first place. And all of this leads to lower profits. Let's take a closer look at each one of them. When it comes to the competition, a lot of times what happens is it becomes a race to the bottom. They turn around and make it $50. So you turn around and make it 45 and then you try to beat them. Listen, folks, we're not in this game to race to the bottom because the race to the bottom only leads to lower profits profits. There's a lot of other ways that you can show your value, which we'll get to here in a second. But please, whatever you do, stop trying to race to the bottom and beat your competition on pricing. At minimum, match them, but preferably show your value of why you're worth more. The other problem with competition is it doesn't really account for your personal business needs. Every business is different. And at the end of the day, your pricing needs to fit your business's needs. And who's to say your competition is profitable in the first place? A lot of people aren't profitable or they're making very little profit. So if you're chasing them, guess what? You're just making yours worse because they don't even know what the heck they're doing in the first dang place. So you focus on you and you pricing correctly in the first place. Now here's where we tend to undervalue ourselves because when you undervalue yourself, you fail to account for the experience you bring to the table. There's a lot of people out there that have a lot of experience doing what it is that they're doing. And they have to kind of pull back because they're trying to go get caught up with the Joneses or the competitors or whatever. But at the end of the day, people will pay for your experience, especially if you've been doing something for quite a long time. And you probably have better skills at getting it done in the first place. Your time doing the doing, especially those of you that make your products, a lot of times you fail to account for all the time you spend putting that sucker together. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more here shortly. Now, you also have a special sauce because your business is going to do it a little bit better and a little bit differently with a better customer service, your special sauce is worth something. People will pay to feel special. And the fact that, you know what, word of mouth takes off with those that are more than just a whatever. Because if you're just a whatever, you might as well be one of your competitions. But what makes you special is because of something. Think of one of your favorite restaurants or one of your favorite vendors that you like to use. And it's probably got some special sauce attached to it that makes you feel special as a customer. Remember, people will always pay for value. And your goal when you're doing your pricing is to make sure that yes, you're priced correctly and that you show the value of why that's a good price in the first place. Now, the third thing that I said that people were always messing up had to do with the costs and expenses. There's a couple different ways that you can go about this. Just remember that your prices must account for two different things. They must account for your monthly expenses of your business and for your labor hours as an employee in your business. We're going to talk a little bit more here shortly about the employee wages that you make and the business owner wages that you make. But I can tell you right now that your costs need to include the labor hours you spend making the products or delivering the service that you do. It's critical that those are part of your pricing. Otherwise, you're going to continue to price in correctly because you will not even have a business profit if these two are not accounted for in the pricing process. And we're going to break that down. Now, let's dive into the meat of all of this. First, let's start with the number one calculation you need to know. I preach this all the time, and that is sales minus cost of goods, minus expenses equals your profits. You need to remember this. This is how your profit and loss statement flows, but it's also the best practice to use when pricing your products and services. Sales minus cost of goods, minus expenses equals profits. Let's take a look at an example. Let's just say there's a handyman who 
does sales of $175. This is the project that they're working on. And while they're doing it, their costs are $75 for the materials and then $40 for the labor to do the actual service. More on that to come. That means their costs are $115. Now their expenses, they know they need to set aside $40 out of this sale in order to pay their expenses at the end of the month, which means that this job has $20 in profit. As you can see, 175 minus the 75 minus 40 minus 40 equals the $20 in profit. So this particular sale with this price, this is how it all plays out. Now there's two sections on here that we need to talk about. The first one is the hours that he set aside for doing the job. We're going to dive into that here. And the second thing is how did he come up with the number for the $40 for his expenses? And I'm going to show you how to do that as well, because you're probably going, well, I don't know how to do either one of those. So let's talk about that. Your cost of goods. Remember it was sales minus cost of goods minus expenses. Well, let's focus on cost of goods for a second here. Your cost of goods account for two different things. The first thing is the materials that you use or the ingredients to make the products and services that you sell. So you're going to include all of those as one piece of this formula. The second part of it is fair labor wage for the doer of the service or making the product. So if you have a service, that service cannot be done without a body doing it. Therefore, labor needs to be included in that. If you make your product, there is a person involved in making that product. It needs to be included. Now it's different if you buy your products over the counter. We'll talk about that here in a second. So you're going to have your materials in your ingredients and any fair wage for the doing of that product or service. Now, one thing that I want to talk about is your costs are not everything else that you pay monthly. There's a lot of people that'll tell you to add up all your costs and all your expenses, and this is what you're going to use in your pricing. Well, that is true. It doesn't really help you break down and understand your business that well, nor does it line up with your profit and loss statement. So I'm going to tell you to keep all the other stuff you pay separate, and that's going to be under expenses, which we're going to talk about here in a second. So just for today, all your cost of goods are, are your materials, ingredients, and your fair wage. Okay. All the other items that you pay for every single month are part of your expenses. We'll cover that here in a second. Now let's take a look at three different types of business owners. The first one is going to be service-based. That's where they go out and they do a service. Landscapers, dog groomers, people like that. They do a service for somebody. The second one is products that you make. This is going to be your people that make soap, they knit crochet stuff, uh, your cake makers, things like that, where they take a bunch of uh, ingredients or products and they create something. The third one is going to be products that you don't make. These are resellers. If you sell drills, you buy the drill from somewhere, you turn around and you sell it again. You don't make those. There's no labor attached to that. Now, remember, our cost of goods have two parts to it, right? Materials and ingredients and a fair doer's wage. Let's take a look at all three of them and what this might look like. So in a service-based business, they might have materials that they use for $75. And then they have a fair doer wage of $20 an hour. And let's just say they do it for two hours. That means that they're going to have 40 hours of fair wage labor that they need to include in that particular job. Now, when it comes to the products you make, you might have ingredients that all add up to $25. Now, for those of you that say, hey, my ingredients go make a lot of products, hang on one sec. I've got an example for you here in a minute. Now, they might say it's $15 an hour is a fair wage in order to be able to create that product. And it takes you five hours to be able to get that done, which means the fair labor wage is $75. Once again, we're going to have a, an example breaking this down if you, you batch things and you put them together. So hang on tight. Now, the products you make, it might cost you $15 to buy that product that you turn around and resale, but there's no people that are making it. There's no labor attached to it because you just buy it and sell it. And so there's zero hours associated with that product, which means that your fair wage is going to be zero. There are no labor costs associated in the cost of goods. So if we add these up and we look at the total cost of goods for each of them, our service-based business is going to make 115 dollars. And it's still going to be the 75 plus the 40. And the products that you make are going to be 25 plus the 75 gives you $100. And finally, the person on the end who just buys it and resells it, it's $15 because there is no labor attached. Now, earlier I was talking about people that make things that are multiples. So you might make, for example, soaps and you throw all the ingredients in and you might get multiple bars of something, or you might do multiple of something at a time. Well, 
let me show you what that would look like because a a t-shirt people that make t-shirts, stuff like that. There's all kinds of different examples here of people that, that batch and do a bunch of things at the same time. How would you do it? Well, let's just say that you have materials that come to $50 and you make 20 units. Well, that just means you take the $50 divided by the 20 units tells you that it's 250 in materials per item. And labor hours, let's just say it takes you 10 hours to put that together. Well, in a fair wage of $15, you're going to take the $10 times the $15 tells you the total wage would have been 150, but divided by the same 20 units means that the labor for each one is $7.50. So if we take these two and we add it together to get our cost of goods, it tells us that it's $10. So this might be, for example, someone who makes t-shirts or uh, somebody that makes soaps or, or just makes or creates a bunch of products all at the same time could be birdhouses doesn't really matter but this is going to tell you what that looks like when you're uh, combining a bunch of products at one time to figure out the individual cost of goods now you might be wondering why do you include your labor and why am i so insistent on this because here's the thing you have two hats that you wear in your business the first one you wear is as an employee you are the person doing the doing you don't have employees and if you do that's going to come in later but if but you are doing the doing you need to be paid as that employee and you get paid as the business owner. When we don't separate this out, we assume all of it is one. And the reality is you're not really making money as a business owner because you're not seeing if you're priced correctly in the first place. So it's really important that you understand that your fair wage, you hear me keep saying that, it's not what you think your value is. You can't say, well, I wanna make $50 because I'm the business owner. Great, then make the business profitable. First, you make the product or service profitable, then you can find out if you are being profitable as a business owner. Now you can be paid all at once. I'm not saying to pay it two different ways, but you need to understand the money that you make with the percentage of money that you make as an employee in the business versus as a business owner, because at some point you're going to probably hire someone to redo it. So if it's not you, it's going to be someone else. And if all the money that you make comes out of just whatever's left over at the end of the day, when you hire someone, it really screws you up. And this screws up in the huge mistake a lot of people make because all of a sudden they hire someone and guess what? It's coming out of their wages because really when you hire someone, you're just taking your wages and giving them to somebody else. Therefore, if the business was never profitable in the first place, guess what? The minute you hired that employee, you're not profitable because you put all that money together and now you're turning around giving it to somebody else. So it's really important that we understand how our labor impacts our cost of goods. And by the way, big box retailers, big companies, they all do it this way. You need to run your business the same way. There's a reason that they were able to grow and become big. Now you're probably asking, okay, Great. Now, how about expenses? How on earth do you do those? Well, there's an easy way, which is on your profit and loss statement. And there's a section here for operational expenses. And then there's this little line over here that tells you a percentage that you are spending on your operational expenses. Now, your PL may not have these percentages. You can print them with percentages. You can ask your bookkeeper to print them with percentages. Or you can just take the total expenses divided by the total sales. And that's going to give you this percentage as well. By the way, every month is going to fluctuate because you're going to have different sales every single month. So if you can do a year to date number, that's the best way to do it. It's going to give you the most clean number versus one that might be skewed by something you paid for. But whatever number you choose, it's a good starting point for you. Now there's some of you that are going great, but I don't have one of those. I haven't created those. I have I don't have the first clue. Okay, there's a down and dirty way to be able to do this. And I call this plan B, which is what you're going to do. What you're going to do is you're going to turn around and you're going to add up all of your other monthly operational expenses. So this is where you're going to capture all those other expenses I told you to ignore earlier. This is going to be your utilities, advertising equipment. You know, by the way, if you buy something Something, if you buy a piece of equipment and you use it, it is not part of your cost of goods. The only time it's part of your cost of goods is if you give it to the client. If you give it to the customer, to the client, then it is part of your cost of goods. But if you keep it and keep using it for more people, and this is a lot of small tools, mixers, drills, things like that, that is an expense that you spend in the business. That is not a cost of goods. So please do not include that. Um, Okay, so this is going to be all your other monthly operational expenses that you have. You're going to then guesstimate the sales that you think you're going to do for the month. So in this case, let's just say that you you think you're going to do $10,000 in monthly sales. And when you add up all of those expenses, it comes to $2,000. Well, you take the $2,000 and you divide it by the sales of 10,000 and that tells you 20%. That means when you're figuring out your pricing, 20% of everything you sell is going to be set aside for your expenses. So once again, you take your monthly sales, 
out of all of those expenses you expect to have that aren't captured in your cost of goods, divide the expenses by the monthly sales, and that's going to give you the rough estimate for your percentage. And this is going to get you pretty darn close. So now we want to pull it all together. So let's take a look at what that might look like. Now it's time to price something. So we're going to take something that we're going to sell and we're going to grab our formula sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. And we're thinking about a price about 75. You don't have to necessarily work this backwards. Just pick the price you were thinking about doing and then see if it works. If it works, it works. If not, then you just tweak it from there. So in this particular case, we're thinking about pricing it at $75. We want to know, does this make sense? So the first thing we're going to do is look at our cost of goods. So in order for us to do this, we know we have $10 worth of materials and it's going to take us about an hour to be able to do it and at a fair wage of 20 bucks an hour. Therefore, we know our cost of goods comes up to 30 dollars. Now it's time to do our expenses. Well, remember we know we figured out 20%. So in order to figure out this number, we take the set, the price we're thinking of, $75, and we're going to take 20% of that because we're going to set aside 20%. 20% 20 of 75 is $15. Now there's a couple different ways you can do that on your calculator. Uh, probably the easiest is 75 times 0 0.20, but there's also the percentage key and you can do it that way. But 20% of 75 is $15. So now let's see, say price, which is sales, minus cost of goods, minus expenses equals your profits. So in this case, $75 minus the $30 minus the 15 tells us that we have the potential for $30 in profits. And that's what we're looking for. So we're thinking, you know what, that $75 is a great price. If it wasn't, and let's just say it was zero, or let's say it was 10 and we wanted to get a little bit more, we just adjust the price and redo the calculation again. Now, I do want to give you a word of caution when it comes to that $30 dollars because profits don't go straight to your pockets. A lot of times people think that when the company is profitable, I get to keep it all. No, that is not the case. Your profits go to three places. One is retained earnings. This is money that you put back into the business. It might be you put it back into the business to buy things, to help grow the business. It might be because you're saving up for your slower months and you need to have cash in the bank in order to do that. So your retained earnings stays in the company for you to be able to grow and cover the future business needs of the company. You're going to take some and you're going to put it towards taxes. And then you will say, this is my owner's draw. This is how much money I'm pulling out of it. For example, in this particular example, you might, since you had $30, you might say, I'm going to leave $10 into the, the business. I'm going to put $10 set aside for taxes and I'm going to take $10 for me as the owner. Third, 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 seems pretty smart to me. And that's a good way for a lot of people to start until you really get to understand how much money you have in your business and what's going on. But just remember, your profits go to three different things, retained earnings, taxes, and your owner's draw. Now, please do me a favor, capture your time as an employee in your business. A lot of folks are not doing that. They're just saying, hey, I want this lump sum of money at the end of the day, and this lump sum is going to cover my expenses, and I'm going to keep the rest. That's not the way to do it. You really want to use sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. And if you have labor time, you want to make sure you capture those employee hours as labor. So this way you are prepared for your future growth. You are part of the cost of your services or the products that you make, depending upon how you do it. It's very important that you capture that because then and only then are you going to be able to reap the rewards of the success of your business. You need to understand pricing inside and out of your business because it's also critical that you know your business numbers. And that's what this all comes down to, knowing your business numbers. If you know your business numbers, you're going to be profitable. I understand you may not like math, but I'm telling you this can be a lot of fun to know if you're doing it the right way. And one of the best ways you can do is to really understand this profit and loss. It has all kinds of information down there that you need. Now, remember the number one calculation, say it with me, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals your profits. This one calculation alone is going to help you make the right decisions the vast majority of the time. It's very simplistic. It's that way on purpose. You don't have a complicated business when you start out. So don't go making it complicated just because other people tell you you should know a bunch of other things. Stick to this in the beginning. I promise you it's going to do right by you. And remember, you wear two hats in your business. One is as an employee. You need to make sure that you are being paid a fair wage for the work done when you're wearing your employee hat. And then as as a business owner, you're going to get paid based off of the success of the business. And that is because you priced correctly and you made sure that your business had a profit. Remember, by knowing your business numbers and doing them correctly, you create a business and not just a job. And that's ultimately what you got yourself into. You didn't want to just 
build yourself a job. You wanted to build a business and that's what we're here for, for you to learn. Now, if you want to learn more about your profit and loss, check out this video right here, which will be down in the show notes. And if you want to learn more on pricing, there's these two videos right here, which will also have a link down below. Plus I'll continue to make even more of them. And if you like what you see, please hit that like button and don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss any of the future videos that will be coming your way. Now get out there, price correctly, and be the badass business owner that I know you are.